Hello, friends. Yesterday I reviewed a White Ranger, and the day before that I reviewed a White Ranger, and today I thought, why don't I just review all the White Rangers? Well, all the ones I have, anyways. Well, friends, welcome to what is pretty much my first ever full-on action figure comparison video, and I'm so excited about it. First up on the left, we got the armored Mighty Morphin White Ranger from Bandai America that was made in, like, 2013 for the Power Rangers 20th anniversary. It was a long time ago. Right next to him, we got the Legacy Collection Mighty Morphin White Ranger, made by Bandai. Specifically, Bandai America made both of these guys, and it came out last year, but I just reviewed it like a month ago or so. Next to the right of him, of course, we got Hasbro's Lightning Collection White Ranger, which I just reviewed like two days ago, and this came out this year. It's the most recent one here, I think. And all the way on the far right, what I reviewed yesterday, the SH Figure Arts Mighty Morphin White Ranger, or just White Ranger, since that's what it was called on the packaging. And it came out last year, I think, but I just reviewed them yesterday, and they all get smaller as you go this way, so I thought I'd put them on the far right. Anyways, let's take a look at everybody's sculpt. First up, the Armored White Ranger's head sculpt is pretty nice, pretty accurate to the show, no complaints. Pretty much the same thing goes for the Legacy Collection, looks perfect, spot on. The Lightning Collection's head is more or less the same, of course. The Figure Arts head, also pretty much the same. I'm gonna call this one a draw, everyone has essentially the same head sculpt. Moving down to the armor on the chest now, we get the first major criticism, which is the Armored White Ranger's armor is just like so loose fitting on his body really feel is kind of cheap i mean you can hear that there right the legacy collection has this little gap in the armor it's flexible but otherwise pretty good the lightning collection does not have a gap in his armor and it's still very very flexible sh figure arts no gap not flexible but they came up with a different sort of solution so so far i'm going to give some points to figure arts and the lightning collection because they don't have any gaps and they got the best shield solutions. Moving down to the arm, the Armored Red Ranger's armband is actually a separate piece, which is kind of cool because that's sort of his whole gimmick. But then look at that bicep! He has been taking so much steroids. And then the lower gauntlet is super inaccurate by being a separate piece. It really looks too short. The Legacy Collection's armband is sculpted. The gauntlet is sculpted on. Little wrinkles on the gloves are sculpted on. Got no real complaints with it. On the Lightning Collection, the armband's also sculpted on, same thing with the gauntlet and the little lines in the glove, but everything is just super, super wrinkly on that sleeve. Doesn't quite look how it did on the show. SH Figure Arts also sculpted the armband, sculpted the gauntlet there, sculpted the little lines in the glove. Pretty perfect, although that joint does break up the sculpt a little, so if I had to give someone one little point for the arms alone, I guess it would be Legacy Collection, surprisingly. Moving below the chest armor, the Armored Red Ranger, no surprise, has way too much abs sculpted right there. But then other than that, on the belt, he has this little box on it where his holster should be. And that's just where the holster plugs in or Saba plugs in. And that little box shape should not be on the belt. It should be smooth all the way around. Much like how the Legacy Collection's belt is when you remove the holster on that. And speaking of the holster, the Armored One didn't even have one. So he's already out of the running on this one. And the holster on the Legacy Collection has a little slit so you can slide it in. The size of it is pretty accurate to the show. Although, unfortunately, he's got the really distracting abs on his sculpt. They're way muscly compared to the rest of the body. The Lightning Collection doesn't even have any visible abs. It does have a few more wrinkles where there really weren't that many on the show. And then his holster is a bit bigger and thicker than it actually was on the show. Which, I mean, I know they did to incorporate Saba, but it's not quite accurate to the sculpt. So Legacy is winning for now. SH Figure Arts is the only one here with abs that actually look how they looked on the show, pretty smooth because of the tight costumes, and then the holster also looks accurate to the show. However, I'm not really a fan of how easily this holster pops out of the belt, but that's not what we're reviewing right now. In terms of the sculpt, SH Figure Arts wins this point. Moving right along to below the belt, if we take a look at the legs, what the heck are those things on the Armored White Ranger? He's out of the running. Legacy Collection's legs look pretty good, even if they're broken up a bit here for the sake of the articulation. And then the straps on the bottom of his feet, like, wow, they're kind of kind of thick. I don't remember them being that noticeable on the show. Lightning Collection incorporates the articulation there much more smoothly. However, super wrinkly down at the knees and at the boots. Thankfully, those straps there are a lot more subtle like they are in real life. But man, just, just wrinkle, wrinkle, wrinkly. Like, I mean, boots don't get that wrinkly in real life. SH Figure Arts doesn't break up the thigh sculpt at all. Although that might hit them in articulation. And then the little straps just incorporated the best out of all of them. Wrinkles are subtle. He wins this point too. Looking at the sculpt overall, the armored one 
He's just too roided out, and all the little separate gauntlets, they, they, they're just too thick on him. He's just not very good. He's flat out out of the running and didn't get any points when we looked at all the little details. Legacy Collection, not so roided out, doing much better, but those abs stick out like a sore thumb, although pretty good by comparison. And then Lightning Collection, much, much better, but overall too wrinkly, I think. And then if you stand these guys all side by side like this, you're going to notice one commonality, which is the peg. And the double pegs and the double pegs, but SH figure arts? No pegs at all. Not overly muscly, not overly wrinkly. He wins the overall sculpt. I'm gonna give him like 10 whole points because sculpt is pretty darn important, right, friends? <coughs> now let's take a look at the paint. Now, overall, which ranger do you think has the brightest shade of white? Because he is a white ranger after all. Is it the armored one or the legacy collection? I don't know, but either way, they both have a much brighter shade of white than the lightning collection of SH Figure Arts. Although the SH Figure Arts has that pearlescent shine that's really nice. I'm not sure, but looking at all these guys side by side, lightning collection kind of looks like the worst shade of white, honestly. So for the shade of white alone, I am going to give a point to the legacy collection just because I think he stands out the best out of the four of these guys when you put them right next to each other. Comparing that shade of gold though, it's very hard to say. It definitely kind of looks the deepest and the darkest on the Lightning Collection, and I think I kind of like that if you look at the shoulders especially, like this just looks a little too yellowish, and then kind of the Legacy Collection does too. SH Figure Arts definitely looks nice, I think he's second running, but I'm going to give a point to the Lightning Collection on this one. Next, if we're going to take a look at the paint, let's look at Slop. The Armored Ranger pretty much has none. Look at the helmet, perfectly clean. These are all separate pieces, so, you know, it's impossible to have Slop, and he's mostly molded in white plastic, and he's got something none of the other rangers have, which is gold little diamonds underneath his armor, but, you know, that's not really accurate to the show, I think. No Slop to speak of really at all on him, so, so far, doing pretty good, I'd say. The Legacy Collection, I don't really remember him having any paint slop. The shield looks clean, gauntlets look clean, armbands are clean. I appreciate the glossiness on the black there. Yeah, no slop either. So either they're both going to get a point or someone with some slop is going to lose a point. And I think that's him. Lightning Collection, slop on the shoulder there. The lines are off on the helmet there, especially the bottom one right there above the white eyes. And that thing back there. Look pretty good on the back, but on the front, that little thing, the gold band, black is running over. There's no slop on that SH Figure Arts, so I think you're going to lose a point here, Lightning Collection. And yeah, SH Figure Arts, no slop at all. So he's going to be good in this round. I can't give all three figures a point, especially since I don't want to give Armored any points. But I will detract a point from Lightning because, well, he's the sloppiest out of all of them, unfortunately. Overall paint, however, I think pretty much comes down to the SH Figure Arts and the Legacy Collection. I mean, the both don't have any real slop. This guy's got a brighter shade of white. This one has a richer shade of gold, I think. His black is pretty glossy, but you know what? It's not supposed to be glossy black on the show. Um, so I'll give a point to him for the black alone, but overall in terms of paint, I'm still going to give it to SH Figure Arts. Look at that shininess on the white. Like, yeah, it doesn't make the white quite as bright, but... Overall, I think he wins the paint round. Next up is the articulation. Let's see who has the most points and who has the most range. The Armored White Ranger has one point there at the head. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'll count that twice because he can swivel both ways on that. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and thirteen. 14 diaphragm, 15 waist, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, and 25 points. Not too shabby for a figure from 2013. Legacy Collection has one at the head, two and three, four, five, because it's a double elbow, I'll count it that way, six, seven, and eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, and 29. Ooh, already doing better than the Armored Ranger over there. 
Next, the Lightning Collections made by Hasbro, which is known for Marvel Legends, and Marvel Legends is known for articulation, so they better have done a pretty good job on this. There's one at the head, two, three at the shoulder there. Don't forget the butterfly joints. Four, five, and six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eight, twenty-one. 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, and 27. Ooh, right in between Armored and Legacy versions. Pretty interesting. They might beat the Legacy version when we get to the range, though. Last but not least, SH Figure Arts has two up above the neck. There's one at the head, one at the neck, so that's two already. There's three and four. Don't forget those shoulder pads on the chest armor. Then underneath, we got five with a butterfly joint. Six with the shoulder joint, seven and eight because of the double elbow, nine and ten because that wrist swivels both ways, just like on the Legacy Collection. Then we got 11 and 12 over here, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 at the diaphragm, 18 at the waist, 19, 20, no thigh swivels, remember, 21 and 22, 23 and 24. 25 and 26, because this has the same double ball thing as the wrist, so I'll count that twice. 27, 28 for that one. Then 29, 30. So we've got a clear winner in terms of the number of articulation. 10 more points for SH Figure Arts. But of course, range matters much more than just how much articulation you've got. Let's take a look at my armored ranger's head, and he can look so far up and so far down, and that's not that good. Legacy Collection can go this far up, this far down. That's certainly a bit better. The Lightning Collection, much further up, equally far down as the Legacy. And SH Figure Arts, because there's two joints, I think you can look just a smidge farther up, don't you? And when it comes to looking down, there's a point for him. Armored's head can go all the way around, side to side. He's got a little bit. Legacies can go all the way around too, and side to side. Uh, maybe a little less, actually, than Armored. Lightning Collection, all the way around. Big surprise. Best side-to-side -side so far. And SH Figure Arts, also all the way around, side-to-side. -side. Beats them all. One more point for him. Next, let's look at those arms. Ooh, that's not so good. I think you're the running, Armored Ranger. But at least you can get up above 90. Which Legacy cannot do unless you use a swivel end. But even then, you can't really do it with the shield in the way there. There's an advantage Armored has over this guy. Lightning Collection, a bit more than 90, certainly better than Legacy Collection. And SH Figure Arts, ooh, way above 90. But is it better than the Armored Ranger? Uh, hard to say, but his shield didn't come flying off, so that's another point for him. Next, how far forward can those arms go? Well, Armored doesn't have a butterfly joint, so he's out of the running. Same thing goes for Legacy Collection, unfortunately. Lightning Collection, though, can get them forward, looking pretty good. And SH Figure Arts can definitely go forward. Not bad, but is it better than the Lightning Collection? Mmm, a little tough to say, but I'm going to give it to the Lightning Collection. How far back can they go? Lightning Collection's got some good range there. SH Figure Arts, uh, seems like the shield just kind of gets in the way. It's not really the fault of the joint, but uh, more range than the butterflies forward and back. Here's a point for the Lightning Collection. Next, let's swivel those arms around, and uh, wow, your bicep kind of pushes your arm away from your body when you do that, doesn't it, Armored? Legacy Collection, same thing happens a little bit, but nowhere near as dramatic. At least you can swivel all the way around, that's nice. Lightning Collection, ooh, I didn't think that would happen, but it does. He still has the same problem, pushes his arm out a little as you rotate. Much more than uh, Legacy Collection did, interesting. And SH Figure Arts, you don't have a real bicep swivel? This is the furthest you could go? I'm giving a point to Legacy Collection! He actually swivels around the best! His arm doesn't poke out at an odd angle like the Lightning Collections does, and he can go all the way around at that joint. Nice! Next up is Elbow Range. Armored is the only one with a single joint, and, uh... I mean, at least he's getting less than 90 there, it looks like. Or maybe it's exactly 90. I don't know. Legacy Collection? Uh, can almost touch his shoulder, almost doing a complete crunch there. Pretty good. Lightning Collection? It's a little hard to move that second joint, but oh wow, actually is touching his shoulder. 
almost complete crunch. I mean, if the shield weren't in the way, like, oh, wow, yeah, he is touching his actual shoulder and not just the shoulder pad. Pretty good so far. SH Figure Arts. Uh, ooh, can't touch his shoulder, but it's also really hard to move the top half of the double elbow. Let me try and squish that up and... Oh, wow, even if I can get them both to move and get them to crunch, I think Lightning Collection is going to win because it's just much easier to do. And I don't think I can get them to do it all the way. So there's a point for Lightning Collection! At the wrist, Armored can go so far forward and so far backwards. Legacy seems pretty comparable. Lightning definitely seems to get further forwards. And just about the same backwards. SH Figure Arts, about the same as Lightning forwards. And oh, about the same backwards, but he popped off. Can get him backwards with, oh, can't quite get the same backwards. Well, I guess that's a point for Lightning. Everyone's wrist can swivel all the way around, so that's not much of a contest, but lateral movement. Armored White Ranger can move it just as much as he could move it forwards and backwards. Same thing goes for Legacy. You gotta twist the ball in the right position first, but he can get that lateral movement. Lightning does not have a ball joint in there. There is no lateral movement. At least he can swivel his wrist all the way around, though. SH Figure Arts has a similar ball joint. Can get some lateral movement, but I feel it's not as impressive as Legacy Collections. So that's a point for Legacy. With his diaphragm joint, the Armored Ranger can look so far forward, so far back. Legacy Collection can do a bit better forwards and backwards, I think. But Lightning Collection, oh man, he blows those guys out of the water right now. Wow, that's impressive range. Not even SH Figure Arts has the same range at the diaphragm. Goes pretty good back, but the forward, nowhere near as good as the Lightning Collection. Chuck another point up for him. Now everyone can swivel 360 at the waist, except for the Lightning Collection, but he makes up for it by swiveling at the diaphragm, so that's pretty much a wash there. Let's actually look at the hips. The Armored can go so far forward, almost to 90, almost to a chair sit and pose, and eh, just a little bit back, really. Legacy can go pretty much the same amount forward, and just a little bit back, really. Lightning looks like he can maybe go a teeny bit further, like just about exactly 90, and then backwards uh, even less, surprisingly. SH Figure Arts, however, can go up that far, but you can pull this joint down further and get him to above 90. He's the only one who can do that. And when it comes to going backwards, well, he's blowing everyone else out of the water. There's a point for him on the hips. Doing the splits, the armored can go to 180. Pretty impressive. Legacy, almost 180. Lightning. Also almost 180, probably a little less than Legacy. SH Figure Arts, pull those joints down and... Huh, almost 180. This guy actually wins a point! This guy can also swivel his hip all the way around. So can the Legacy Collection. And the Lightning Collection, of course. But SH Figure Arts, uh, that's as far as you get. So I can't really give everyone a point for that. I'll actually take one point away from SH Figure Arts, surprisingly. Moving on down to the knees. Uh, well, Armored's the only one with single knees, and I don't think they even get to 90. That's pretty bad. Legacy's got double. He can get pretty good crunch. Lightning Collection, even better. He's almost kicking his own butt there. And Figure Arts, uh, hmm, pretty darn close to Lightning Collection. Let's compare closely. Uh, draw? Point for each? I guess so. Everyone can swivel their foot all the way around, whether the cut's up at the boot or at the actual foot. So that's kind of pointless to compare that. Let's take a look at the actual range of the foot, and Armored can go so far back, and uh, not so much forward. Legacy can go so far back, and mm, a little bit more forward. Lightning Collection, it's really clicky, but probably the farthest back out of any of them, and pretty much the same amount forward. Figure Arts, not quite as far back as Lightning, and... Not quite as far forward. I'm gonna give it to him! So when it comes to the overall implementation of the articulation, which figure I prefer is pretty difficult to say. Although it's obviously not this guy. I think like the best articulation scheme would be some kind of mix between the Lightning Collection and the SH Figure Arts, cause yeah, it'd be really nice if the Lightning Collection had those double ball wrists that let him hinge his wrist laterally, and it'd be nice if SH Figure Arts had cuts at the biceps and the thighs that let him swivel around like these two guys do. But in terms of like, points for the score, I don't really have anything else to give out, because this guy had the greatest number of joints, the greatest points of articulation, but everybody has something on everyone else when it comes to the range. I mean, even the Armored Ranger could 
do the splits better than any of these guys. So that's pretty much it when it comes to articulation. Now sculpt and paint and articulation and all that are of course way more important on a figure than packaging, but I think we can afford to give some points and take a look at packaging anyways. The armored white ranger has this big bulky packaging, but it's kind of necessitated by the fact that all his little armor and gear and accessories are packed up in there and spread out to be displayed. On the side, get picture of the figure on the back. Pretty much same color motif, just explains the figure on the side. We get some, you know, Megaforce cards advertised there. Anyways, I really do like the color in the background. It looks very toyish, however. Not very collector friendly, but you open this guy up on the side after you cut one piece of tape. Slide the tray out and everything just pops out. The packaging gets the job done. It's all right. Now for the Legacy Collection White Ranger, I no longer have his packaging, but it was exactly the same as this guy. And this guy is another Tommy Oliver action figure. So the packaging's a bit more collector friendly, but not quite. It's a lot like Marvel Legends. You can open it at the side, just pull the tray out and pop everybody out. Sometimes there's a couple twist ties. This packaging's pretty nice overall. Packaging for the Lightning Collection gets even more compact. I mean, big surprise, the package gets smaller as the figures get smaller. One thing I really don't like about it is the color on the White Ranger. It should be gold and it looks just orange on this packaging. The whole packaging looks orange all around. Anyway, it's a lot more collector friendly than the Legacy Collection packaging. Just open it up here and uh, it's got a little peg holder that's kind of in the way, but you know, at least it doesn't take up like an entire chunk of cardboard at the top. It's a little difficult to open, however. But once you do, everything just pops out of the tray fairly easily, except this head, because the ponytail pokes through a little hole in the back. That makes a real pain to pop all the way out. Last up, SH Figure Arts, even more compact. The most compact out of all of them. Got a really cool design with all kinds of rangers in black and white there. And of course, the thing's overall white, because this is White Ranger. So most compact out of everybody. Opens at the side, so easier to open than Lightning Collection. And then the trays, there's one to protect everything and hold it in place, and then everything just kind of slides out. Which is actually very, very nice, because even though stuff just sort of fell out when I opened it, it's just because I'm trying to show you. When it's all put together and in the box, nothing falls out, obviously. No twist ties, no problems. I think this is the best out of the bunch. So here's everybody's packaging side by side, and yeah, SH Figure Arts is the smallest and most compact out of the bunch. Lightning Collection has this little flap, but that's at least a lot better than having a whole cardboard thing there. And yeah, Lightning Collection and SH Figure Arts pretty much look most professional overall, but I think SH Figure Arts edges it out. It keeps the figure protected, well displayed, much easier to get into and open. And then, I mean, they got the guts to put the actual figure on the packaging, whereas they put a cartoon, they put a photograph, and then Armored Collection put a tiny photograph and a tiny picture of their figure, but like, Clearly, SH Figure Arts is proud of their work. They put it right on the front, and the packaging overall just looks the most professional and nicest, and it's most compact. doesn't even have one of those little tag things, so really professional job on this one. 10 more points for SH Figure Arts! Now, for the accessories, I thought I'd do something similar articulation where I counted who has the greatest number first, but uh, the Armored White Ranger is going to make that a little unfair because his whole gimmick is that all his armor and gauntlets and stuff that the other Rangers just have as part of their sculpt are accessories on him, but I guess we will pop them all out and then pop them all onto him and take a look at him in the interest of fairness, right? So first thing you do with the Armored White Ranger is you pop his whole darn forearm off and you get the little armbands up on his bicep. You just push them up there. That's that part. Then you can pop the forearm back on, pop the wrist off and then get his little gauntlets in here and then pop the hand back on at the wrist and then we'll do the same thing for the other arm as soon as we get that arm done once that's on you can pop on the main chest shield if you'd like it just has all these little tabs they clip together unfortunately the real problem with it is when you move those arms it clips right apart so it's not really an ideal setup there and then he's got the same type of gauntlets that he had on his gloves at the legs. And you pretty much just clip those on and then he's all armored up. So don't really think it's fair to count all that stuff as accessories since the other rangers do have it. It's just not removable. But he does come with two alternate gripping hands and of course 
comes with his trademark weapon, which is Saba. Now, that may not be too many accessories, but it is at least more than what the Legacy Collection White Ranger came with, which was Saba, and that's it! Lightning Collection, of course, also comes with Saba there. But on top of that, he also gets two alternate fist hands, a cool little blast effect for Saba, and an alternate head, so I think he's winning so far in terms of quantity, since I'm not going to count all that armor over there. He's got the most. SH Figure Arts, however, comes with a bit of stuff. An alternate helmet to go with the alternate head he's already wearing. An alternate pair of gripping hands, another alternate pair of one hand that grips and one hand for posing, and of course the signature weapon Saba, but it's got two blades for two modes of display. So SH Figure Arts has the most in terms of number of accessories, if we're going to count everybody's actual accessories and not this guy's armor, but I'm not going to give points for the number of accessories because it's the quality that matters and not the quantity, so let's take a look at everybody up close. So if we were going to count the armor on the Armored White Ranger, I don't think I'd rate it very highly because it just looks too bulky overall. Like, look at those things on his thunder calves already. I mean, it just doesn't look very good. And doesn't work very good. You move an arm, shield pops off. So I'm not really impressed with the armor as accessories. But let's take a look at his alternate hands. He comes with two that are made for grip and Saba. And then he comes with two that are made for sort of martial arts poses, I guess. They're not... 100% open, but that one could grip Saba if you want, because Saba has a little peg, and we'll look at that a little bit later. But let's see how easy it is to pop the hands on. I think we kind of already saw when I put on all the armor, but I mean, the downside of having those ball pegs inside the wrist is as you try to put a hand on, they tend to move out of the way. So it's not the easiest thing in the world to switch the hands on this guy but I'm glad they did include a pair of alternate hands in the first place. Darn it, I can't get this. I can, and, and the gauntlet moving as I try to get a grip doesn't really help much either. Let's pop on there, come on. Is it on? It's almost, no, not yet. There we go. A little difficult to get those alternate hands on. I'm only gonna stop at one because two would be too much trouble. Legacy Collection doesn't get no alternate hands, even though they totally pop off and when they do, he has the same issue as uh, the armored guy. That ball moves, but it got on easier on that guy at least. So, But, I mean, I can't judge how well the alternate hands get on one. He doesn't have any, so armored is actually winning at something for right now. Lightning Collection comes packaged with a gripping hand and a karate chop hand, which none of the other rangers actually have. And then the alternates are a couple fists. Let's see how easy they are to pop in and out. And he's the only one without those ball joints, so... He's actually got these long pegs, and they are without a doubt the easiest hands to pop in and out of all of them. And he's only got two alternate hands, but then so did Armored. But his hands are easier to pop in, so he's beaten Armored. I'm sorry, you're not getting the point this time, guy. Last up, of course, SH Figuarts White Ranger has the most number of alternate hands. He uh, gets fists and grips just like Lightning Collection, but he also gets those ball joints, which will make them a bit more difficult to pop on, probably... Actually, not really. Not really that much more difficult. And he's got two more than Lightning Collection, so I'm going to give him the point here. The only real downside is, you know, he doesn't have a karate chop hand like Lightning Collection did. But then again, Lightning Collection didn't have the obviously like karate pose stopping hand either. So it's pretty much a wash on the types of hands. He's got two more than him, and they're easy to pop on. Just as easy at least. So point for SH Figuarts. Next up, let's take a look at Saba and on the Armored Ranger. Do I really need to say much? I mean, uh, sculpt's all right, but they didn't paint anything on the head. And then every other ranger has a holster, but he just has a darn hole in his belt, which is not accurate and just pegs in. Not as good as the holster. Saba's not painted as nicely. He's pretty much out of the running. Legacy Collection, of course, does have that holster and Saba's looking a bit better. At least his head's painted. His eyes are even red. I don't see any real paint errors. I mean, it's not 100% detail. There's supposed to be like black stripes here, but he's got the holster. Saba just slides on in because they put a little cut in it, thankfully, and works really, really well. Although one downside, Saba is ginormous. When you see the actual show, Saba's head comes up to like, you know, the chest armor here. And here it's like hitting his armpit. And I know Saba's like called a sword, but it's really not as long as most swords. He's really just like, you know like a long dagger or short sword length, really. But at least the details are nice on the Legacy Collection version. The Lightning Collection came up with a similar solution to the Saba holster problem, which was they put a little slip back here, only theirs doesn't go all the way through, and Saba can slide on in 
just fine, although that holster is like a lot wider than it was in the show, and so I think I kind of prefer the look for the solution they came up with in the Legacy Collection, and then Saba still rests like super high hitting the ranger's armpit there, so that's not the best, but if we look at Saba himself, no red eyes, but at least they got the black stripes there, so lose a detail, gain a detail, but then look at the face, all silver, and then this is gold, but that is not, so lose a detail, gain a detail, and gain two errors? Even though it's a little too big, I think I'm going to give the better Saba so far to Legacy Collection, actually. SH Figure Arts Saba is the only one to try and emulate the extending blade that Saba had on the show. It's uh, compact sometimes, and then it extends at others. So what you do is you can pop the entire blade out and pop the other one in, and then Saba is in extended mode. And the White Ranger here has a holster, but Saba won't fit in through it in uh, either mode actually extended or compact which kind of stinks what you have to do is you got to take this guy apart and the holster falls off pretty easily and you got to shove this guy up there and then you got to put Saba back on and then he's in the holster and then the holster is on him so you can't actually sheathe it which i mean even kind of the armored one pulled off but he didn't even have a holster so i won't count him but legacy and lightning pulled that off much better i think in terms of functionality however Saba is really really accurate on this one. He still comes up to the armpit So every Saba has the problem of like riding too high on the actual White Ranger I mean like he should be like, you know down here actually his head, but whatever it is what it is The details however are definitely the best on this Saba. Let's let's compare all of them actually now when it comes to Saba's holster I think I'm giving the point to the legacy collection actually because his looks the most accurate and is actually the easiest to use but for Saba himself I am not too sure. Like, everyone has the tiger coins sculpted in there. Everyone has the little ridges and lines sculpted. Uh, this is the armored one, and it's the only one without the little rivets in his gold part sculpted and without a painted head and with a big ugly peg on it. So I think it's pretty obvious he's out of the running right away. Now, everybody else, the gold is very nice. Everyone got the little ring that's real small under there. They could have left that off and it would have been fine. This is obviously the biggest one. It comes with the... Uh, Legacy Collection one, and then one in the middle here is Hasbro's Lightning Collection, and the last one's SH Figure Arts. Now, Hasbro did not paint the red eyes. They're the only one to do that, and the only one with a symmetrical error, like well, gold should be on the other side there, but whatever. Whatever. Hasbro's silver actually looks the nicest out of the three, and SH Figure Arts isn't exactly even silver on the top. It's just like a dark gray, actually, but, I mean, overall, it's a pretty hard choice. Like, I think, yeah, the silver's not perfect on SH Figure Arts, but... They got the stripes, unlike Legacy Collection. They got the gold on both sides of the cheeks and the red eyes, unlike the Hasbro version. Eh, I'm going to give it to SH Figure Arts for the best looking Saba sword. Next up, we get a look at Blast Effects for Saba. And Hasbro's Lightning Collection White Ranger is the only one to have them. So he wins by default. Next up for accessories, it's alternate heads. The Armored and the Legacy Collection don't have any, so it comes down between... The Lightning Collection one, which pops on pretty easy. And the SH Figure Arts, which also pops on pretty easy, so there's no contest there. However, actual head sculpts and paint jobs. I'm going to give it to Hasbro. Lightning Collection looks better overall. Looking at the accessories overall, the Armored White Ranger came with his armor, but it looks pretty terrible, and he came with the worst looking Saba, but at least he's got two alternate hands, which is more than the Legacy Collection version got, who only comes with Saba, and yeah, he does have the best holster out of the bunch, but that's not enough for him to compete with these guys. The contest really comes down to between the Lightning Collection and SH Figure Arts. Now, they both have the alternate heads, and they both have Saba, of course. Now, they both get a pair of alternate hands. And SH Figure Arts has an extra Saba part, but Lightning Collection has an extra blast effect for Saba. And then, so pretty even, but then SH Figure Arts has two more hands. But then, Lightning Collection has the better head sculpt. So, kind of a tie, I guess. Ten points for both. Now, scale is something that's not very fair to compare, 
But everyone here is obviously different height, so we will take a look at it anyway. First up, the Armored White Ranger is about 7 and an eighth inches tall. The Legacy version, 6 and 3 fourths. Lightning Collection comes in at just under 6 and a quarter. And SH Figure Arts is more like 5 and 3 fourths. He's the shortest guy out of the bunch. Now, being more like 7 inches tall on the left does not really mean that that armored version fits in with any 7 inch scale figures from companies like NECA. I mean, look at it over here. He's actually taller than Arnold Schwarzenegger and Buffer too. Like... Yeah, and stylistically, he just wouldn't fit in even if he could find some figures to fudge the scale with, because he's just not so realistic. Legacy version, however, I feel like could kind of fit in better, scale-wise at least, with some figures from NECA, so that's a plus. On the right over there, the Lightning Collection and the SH Figure Arts are done in more of a 6-inch scale. But if you're looking for one that fits in with your 6-inch scale superhero figures like Marvel Legends or DC Universe, the Lightning Collection's definitely the way to go, because he's the same exact height as the Marvel Legends, scales perfectly with them. Gosh, I wonder why, considering Hasbro makes Marvel Legends right. But him and Peter Parker are the same height, which makes perfect sense, because they're both teenagers. Both should be a bit shorter than Batman, but not this much shorter. SH Figure Arts is done in sort of a more strict 6-inch scale, whereas these superhero lines that a lot of people have are actually more like a 6.5-inch sort of scale, so if you're looking for something to go with those... The Lightning Collection is the way to go. The Armored White Ranger does fit in pretty well with other armored figures from the Megaforce line, though Bandai never completed a team in this style, so if that's what you're looking to do with this guy, you are pretty much out of luck, friends. The Legacy Collection version not only fits in well with 7-inch scale figures, but of course has a whole team in the Legacy line that he scales perfectly with. Lightning Collection of course fits perfectly with 6-inch Marvel Legends or DC Universe type figures like we saw earlier. But if you want to build a team for this guy, you are out of luck at the moment because Hasbro just started the Lightning Collection. Although I'm sure we can trust them to release more Mighty Morphin figures down the line, for the moment, you are out of luck when it comes to team building. With SH Figure Arts though, you don't really have to wait around because there already exists a complete team of Mighty Morphin Rangers in that line, even if they are kind of pricey to come by. Not to mention rangers from other teams and characters from all sorts of intellectual properties SH Figure Arts will scale properly with. So friends, I don't really think there's a winner, quote unquote, when it comes to the scale. Just be aware that the armored version here pretty much fits in with nothing except a couple of figures from his line, which is never going to get a complete team. The Legacy Collection version will scale nicely with some 7-inch figures, and he has a complete team. Lightning Collection is going to fit in with all your Marvel Legends, which... Are much more affordable to collect than SH Figure Arts, so that might be a plus. And he's going to get a complete team down the line, I'm sure, and I'm so excited to review those eventually. And SH Figure Arts will fit in with, well, SH Figure Arts. So all three of these guys scale with something at least. This guy's the only one who doesn't. I guess I'm going to take his one point away. Pew! So if you've been following along with the little counter at the top of the screen, in first place... With a massive 60 points! It's the SH Figure Arts White Ranger who comes out on top! Woo! Yeah! And in a distant second, we got Hasbro's Lightning Collection version, who is honestly a very good figure. Don't let these numbers influence you too much. They're pretty arbitrary, actually. And in third place, we got the Legacy Collection version. And in dead last was zero points. So sad. It's the Armored version who... Yeah, I really wouldn't recommend unless you're some kind of collector who really wants a figure that can do the splits better than these three guys, because you're never going to complete a team with that one, and he's not very good, honestly. The Lightning Collection is very good, definitely a bit more affordable at the Marvel Legends price point if you want something like that. Legacy Collection, you can complete the team with him, and you can probably find his team on a discount at this point, but I think it's pretty hard to find the Legacy versions of the White Ranger and Green Ranger at this point, and that line's not continuing, so... I wouldn't really recommend getting him at this point. But both of these guys are actually very close, though there's no doubt in my mind, SH Figure Arts, the clear winner in terms of sculpt and how it looks and paint and the accessories and everything, except the alternate head sculpt, he is pretty darn spectacular, and I wholly recommend both of these guys, and I hope you enjoyed the comparison. Well, until next time, peace out, friends, and may the power protect you. Oh.